Steve Dangle here. I usually make videos about ice hockey on this YouTube channel, but there's not very much of that right now, is there? I've made one video about Harry Potter before on this channel, and that was about what it was like to discover the books at 30 years old. I had somehow managed to avoid everything, and that includes spoilers. I didn't even know how the thing ended. Obviously now I have, and I'm obsessed with it, and I'm on my seventh read-through of the series. But after all, seven is the most powerfully magical number. Now I got some time, hopefully you got some time too. Here is my next Harry Potter video on this unbelievable question. Out of all the characters who died in the Harry Potter books, who would you choose to keep alive? Only one. And what effect would it have? Similarly, which alive character would you kill? And what effect would that have? This was an actual paper I had to write in college. What college did you go to that let you write that? Was it Hogwarts? Actually, I could see how that would be quite alarming if you went to Hogwarts. Catch a few questions about your paper. Now, I love this question because of how unbelievably difficult it is for me to answer. I've been thinking about my answer for this for a couple days, and as I'm sitting here shooting this, I don't know what my final answer is going to be. So that should make it fun. And this should go without saying, but if you haven't experienced the Harry Potter books yet, spoiler alert, I'm about to talk about characters who die. Now that that's out of the way, there are so many things I love about the Harry Potter series. And one thing that really comes across in the audiobooks that I felt didn't come across in the movies was just regular student life, for example. That was something that was so enjoyable. I loved a lot of the quippy asides, the mystery, the camaraderie. I didn't so much like a lot of the romance angles of it, but then again, I remember I didn't discover these books when I was supposed to. I feel like I was supposed to be a little bit younger, and they weren't exactly written for me in that way. But one thing I think I grasp better now than I would have when I was younger, and the thing I think J.K. Rowling probably did her best job at writing these books, is how she handled death. And what makes this question so hard to ask is almost every character who dies throughout the seven Harry Potter books, they make sense. It moves the plot forward. It has an effect. And there are some characters that didn't necessarily need to die, and there are some really popular ones, and their deaths seem a little gratuitous and pointless. The three most popular ones that I hear discussed, everyone hates the way that Remus Lupin and Nymphadora Tonks were killed off, obviously, and the other one that I hear all the time is Hedwig. And that should give you an idea of how invested everyone is in the Harry Potter series, that the death of an owl is one of the most controversial deaths in the entire series. But I actually like the way all three deaths are handled. Hedwig is killed very early on in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows in the seventh book, and I felt like that was to set the tone. It's to let readers know nobody's safe, characters are going to die. Then there's Lupin, one of the most popular characters in the series, and one of the most likable. I have his wand right next to me. To have him just, you don't even get to see your death. You don't get to experience it through Harry's eyes. Harry just finds him dead? That's it? But, but, at very least, he gets to come back, albeit briefly, with the Resurrection Stone, and he is with Harry as he goes to face Voldemort in the Forbidden Forest. Tonks gets nothing! Nothing! He just finds her dead, and that's the end of it. That's it. And she wasn't even supposed to be there, she wasn't supposed to jump into the battle, and now, Lupin and Tonks' baby, Teddy, is an orphan. That's heartbreaking. And that's the point. Hedwig was more than a pet to Harry Potter in that all the pets in the Harry Potter universe seem to understand plain English. But the way I see it, there is a bit of a parallel or a lesson in the way a pet dies. Now, if you're a pet owner watching this, you can probably rest assured that your pet won't be shot out of the sky by a killing curse. However, we don't really get to choose when that time comes. And that's the dark thing. There always comes a time. Harry wasn't able to treat Hedwig very well in her final days. She had to spend so much time cooped up and restricted to a cage. But maybe the lesson there is to appreciate animals, appreciate anyone while they're there. They enrich your life so much that you need to do your best to enrich theirs while you're together. As for Lupin and Tonks and how unceremonious it was and Harry just happens across their bodies, that's death. Not all of it is witnessed in this great heroic scene, and we can safely assume that 
Lupin and Tonks' deaths were heroic and dramatic. They were in the Battle of Hogwarts. But the Harry Potter series does, I think, a good job in capturing the chaos of war, having never been in a war myself. Like, Lupin and Tonks didn't even get what Mad-Eye got, and Mad-Eye got, like, a toast and a shot, and this moment of shock that he's gone. Which, in a way, that's interesting, because I've seen some people go, why did Hedwig have to die? Mad-Eye dies in the same chase. And to that I would say, as readers, weren't you more attached to Hedwig than Mad-Eye Moody? We barely even got to know Mad-Eye Moody. Mad-Eye Moody was barely even there. He had one epic moment where he got to dunk on the Dursleys at the train station, and that was about it. We become more attached to Imposter Moody more than we do the actual Mad-Eye Moody. So to me, that's why Hedwig's death is so important, because in the book, there's this dramatic pause, and the Order of the Phoenix is like, oh my goodness, Mad-Eye Moody is dead, and they take their, their shot of whatever it is they're drinking, and they, they say a solemn toast to him. And the readers, you're like, okay. And listen, it sucks that he died and everything, but what about Hedwig? Well, she wanted to show how powerful Voldemort was by killing one of the strongest and toughest members of the Order. Could have killed Kingsley if that was the effect. Or she could have killed, and this might be my answer, Hagrid. What? No, 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 you can't kill- Sure you can, it's a book, you can kill whoever you want. Now that's a tough one. Hagrid is probably one of the top five most popular characters in the whole series. And it's interesting because it doesn't seem like he's incredibly important to the plot of the seventh book. But JK gets him in there as much as she possibly can, and I think rightfully so. Hagrid takes Harry away from number four Privet Drive in a motorbike just the same way that he brought him there. Hagrid is also the one in the Forbidden Forest with the Death Eaters who has to carry back Harry's body. But, and this is a point of soreness that I've seen some people say, Hagrid is not in the epilogue of the book. It would have hurt, it would have stung, but you could have killed Hagrid. The motorbike crash lands anyway. Carrying Harry back to the school from the Forbidden Forest, they could have done that with a spell. They could have done that with any old thing and then just plunked him down on the ground. And, as I say, he's not in the epilogue. But Hagrid is not in the epilogue for a simple reason. The story, the vast majority of it, is told from Harry's point of view. Harry does not go back to Hogwarts because parents don't do that. And at the end of it, in the epilogue, Harry's a parent. So where is Hagrid in the epilogue? At Hogwarts, where he belongs. All was well. But, ugh, you know what? You can't kill Hagrid. You can't. To kill him that early in the Deathly Hallows? How do you top that? Sirius, Dumbledore, they're both already dead. To kill Hagrid that early in the seventh book, the stakes would have changed. You would have had to kill one of Ron or Hermione to top that. So let me try to answer the bloody question then. Which Harry Potter character that survives would I have killed and why? And which Harry Potter character that dies would I bring back to life and why? For which surviving Harry Potter character I would kill I have it narrowed down to two choices, one good and one evil. I have seen it suggested, wildly, that Narcissa Malfoy is actually a hero because of her role in bringing Harry back to the castle. No, absolutely very not. She is not a hero. She doesn't try to save Harry. She tries to save Draco. All she is doing is protecting her own family, looking out for her own interests. Oh, so because she was looking out for her own interests, you'd kill Narcissa Malfoy? No. The Death Eaters leave the Forbidden Forest. They return back to the Hogwarts grounds. And it's revealed that Harry is still alive. When Voldemort realizes what's happened, he realizes he's been betrayed, which never really happens in the book, does it? It's just, oh my god, I thought he was dead. It's never realizing that one of his own Death Eaters betrayed him. So, Voldemort kills Narcissa? No. Voldemort kills Lucius? That would be kind of awesome, but no. Voldemort kills Draco. 
that's horrible. You can't do that. Draco has this unbelievable redemption arc. You, you, you can't kill him off once he finally becomes a goodie. Yeah, you can. Lord Voldemort would know. Lord Voldemort always knows. Lucius has been in my ear this whole time trying to get me to participate in the Battle of Hogwarts, trying to save his son, Draco. Narcissa betrayed me in the Forbidden Forest, all in an effort to save her son, Draco. So I will take from them their son, Draco, and they will live with that. A fate worse than death. But there it is. The flaw to Lord Voldemort, there is no fate worse than death. Which leaves us with another option. This character is the backbone of so much that goes on in the entire series. The backbone of the Order of the Phoenix in so many ways. The backbone of her own family. Oh yes, Molly Weasley. Now, don't get me wrong, Molly killing Bellatrix Lestrange is unbelievable. And as a kid, I'm sure that was amazing. She said the B word! It's one of the like three actual swear words in seven books. But Molly Weasley is so underappreciated and does so much for her family. She sacrifices her entire life for her family. What if she actually sacrificed her life? What if she stepped in front of Bellatrix Lestrange's killing curse aimed directly at Ginny? And then her family would be forced to pick up the pieces, already mourning the death of Fred Weasley. And you thought that was bad. Oh my gosh, Fred and George torn apart? Fred Weasley's death might not even be the worst Weasley death. No, you can't kill Molly Weasley, that's terrible. Well, consider this. Molly's greatest fear in the entire world, as told by the bug art that she finds in the Order of the Phoenix, is that members of her family will die in this war against the Death Eaters and Lord Voldemort. She pictures their dead bodies one by one on the floor. And by the time she faces Bellatrix Lestrange, she has already faced her greatest fear, one of her children dying as she stares down on the lifeless body of Fred. What if it was Molly who died? Someone who put their family above all others, leaving that very family to pick up the pieces. And all of a sudden, the lesson of appreciating others while they're still around stings a little bit more, digs a little bit deeper, when it's about Molly Weasley and not an owl. So that is my answer. I would say Molly Weasley. Draco, it still bugs me that him and his family get to sit with everybody else in the Great Hall afterward, hunky-dory like nothing happened. And then Draco is even in the epilogue while Hagrid isn't. That still bugs me. But out of anyone, I might say Molly. But the reason you cannot kill Molly, even though she's my answer, but you cannot kill her, is because that death would have to happen so late in the book, and it would be devastating, way too late in the book, when it's supposed to be this feeling of victory, the way it's written, and the tumult. Oh, it's amazing! In the final scene, the scene of victory after seven books of building, you can get rid of realism a little bit. It doesn't have to be a bunch of the goodies die and a bunch of the baddies die. It's just the baddies are defeated. At the end of it, it feels perfect. You're sad that the story's done, but it was wrapped up in such a nice way. You have this great feeling. All that you're left missing is the story. That feeling would be ruined if Molly Weasley dies like right before the final battle between Harry and Voldemort. That's ridiculous. Draco? you probably get over it a little bit easier, and there would be a lesson there, but I feel like because it's easier, he has to live. I know, I'm sadistic with it, I, I know. Now, which dead character would I have alive? 
Again, this is extremely challenging because I think JK does such a good job of life and death. Every death feels like it has a purpose. Dobby's death is heartbreaking and beautifully written. His eyes with the stars reflecting the sky they could not see, come on! Lupin and Tonks, that's an interesting one. You could have just one of them survive. I would argue Tonks. It's almost less heartbreaking than if he took only one. I know, I know, sadistic. I've seen Neville Longbottom suggested, which, how actually dare you? This answer, I don't think a lot of you are gonna be pleased with, but I'm standing by it. Peter Pettigrew. He dies because he hesitated killing Harry? He dies because he shows a little bit of mercy by not killing Harry, so the magical hand that Voldemort gives him strangles him to death. Really? But in the end, Wormtail, or that is to say, Peter Pettigrew, is somewhat redeemed in that that is what kills him. What kills him is the little bit of remorse that he shows. But what I feel like isn't done enough at the end of the seventh book is what happens to Voldemort's supporters. Again, Lucius Malfoy should be doing hard time in Azkaban, man. That guy was a Death Eater, he helped kill people, he tried to kill a lot more than he actually did. What is he doing sitting in the Great Hall just having a chat with his family? But there would be something beautifully poetic and appropriate of Wormtail, Peter, actually feeling remorse and doing his time in Azkaban, rotting the same way that he made Sirius Black do. Sirius Black served 12 miserable years in Azkaban because of Peter Pettigrew's lies. He should have to pay that back. But he would just escape. He's an animagus. He'll turn into a rat. Uh, they're magical too. I think they'll figure it out. So. Those are my answers. A little bit controversial, I'm sure, but when there are so many characters and so many emotional deaths that do and don't happen, that's the way it's going to be. Leave your thoughts in the comment box down below. Which dying characters would you bring back to life and which surviving characters would you kill? So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends that Lupin and Tonks deserved way better.